and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. So today, I'm going to be going over with you the ingredients in the Raw Beauty Christie X Pure Cosmetics eyeshadow palette that has sold out. Congrats to Christy. So basically, I'm going to break down the ingredients for you, tell you their function, how they can affect an eyeshadow formula, and some of my thoughts on them. I ended up not getting one of the palettes, but I wanted to show my support in some way for this collaboration because I have been a fan of Christy for years now. So first, we're going to start off with the Shimmer Eyeshadow since there's only two of them. So the base ingredient in the Shimmer Shadows is Cal Calcium aluminum borosilicate. This is going to give that sparkly effect. You would not see this in a matte eyeshadow. So these are actually a type of glass, but don't be concerned. These are safe. They are finely milled, starting from a thin film of glass, broken down into flakes, and thoroughly milled down until they are small enough particle size where it will not harm the eyes from having jagged edges. Another base ingredient is synthetic fluorophlogopite, which is the synthetic form of mica. And because this is prepared in a control setting, not only can you control for contaminants, but you can also control the particle size. So you can have bigger particle sizes that don't have jagged edges, and because they are bigger, they can be more reflective and have more of a sparkly effect that you can't get with naturally sourced mica. So mica is also in this formula, but like I said, the particle size of those is gonna be smaller than that of the synthetic floral flogo pipe. And these are gonna be what makes up the base of the eyeshadow. A lot of people will call them filler, but I'm gonna to refer to them as base because Obviously, they do serve some sort of function in order to give that shimmer appearance to the shadow. Magnesium stearate is a binder, and this will help ensure the shadow doesn't go on patchy. And polyethylene in this formula is going to help keep the cake together, aka it's going to keep the eyeshadow in a pan, one that's too loose feeling, it doesn't have enough of these liquid type of binders, is going to fall apart, and I'm sure we've all seen some shadows that were a little bit too soft. Capric caprylic triglyceride is an emollient, something being an emollient, so it's going to give a soft feeling to the skin. This is going to help the texture when you're applying it, so it's not going to have have a rough feeling to it and also act as a liquid binder. Hydrogenated polydesine is also going to act as emollient, but it's going to have more of a glossy appearance to it, so you're not going to find this in the matte eyeshadow. So there are some ingredients in this list that I'm not sure really have an effect past being an antioxidant, and that's going to be vanillin, ginseng root extract, niacetamide, and green tea extract. If Christy didn't choose specifically to, for these to be in there for any sort of like anti-aging, antioxidant kind of purpose, and that was not listed that she wanted them in there on the product description, it may be a signature of the person who formulated this, who created this formula. Sometimes people like to add little things that may not necessarily affect the formula significantly, but it's kind of like their signature on it, if that makes sense. Because where these are in the formula, they're not going to really have an effect. They're very, very low, probably significantly under 1%. So I doubt that they have any significant effect on how the formula behaves. So far, if you have learned something, don't forget to click the subscribe button so that way we can talk more about the science of makeup and skincare. And now we are going to move on to the matte eyeshadows. So the first thing I want to address is how Christy handled the pressed pigment issue. If you're not aware, the FDA in the US has to approve colorants and where they go. So in cosmetics, there are certain lists of colorants where they can be applied. There are a list of FDA approved colorants and what type of cosmetic products they can be in. So that's why this has to be called a pressed pigment palette, even though it is definitely geared towards being an eyeshadow palette. And even Christy mentions that herself that she calls it an eyeshadow palette. And she did mention that the shades that are technically not eye safe are marked with an asterisk and points out the information is on the box but not the palette itself. She also mentioned if you have been known to be sensitive to it, avoid these shadows, although she herself has not experienced any sort of sensitivity. And specifically, she wanted to use these pigments, red pigments in this case, because Carmine is one of the few approved red colorants that is derived from a beetle and therefore would make it not vegan if you used it and she wanted this palette to be vegan. Put a video down below explaining my thoughts on the pressed pigment versus eyeshadow in these palettes. 
that are clearly marketed as an eyeshadow palette. Uh, but I think Christy did a very, very good job of going over this. And I really respect how much time she actually spent in her video on the portion of this. And since people who are going to buy this palette have most likely seen her video, I think that was probably the best place to address this thoroughly. And I hope that more influencers that come with palette or brands that come out with palette will take a lesson from this. So on to the matte ingredients. So the base of this shadow is mica. That's the top ingredient. So in this case, the mica is going to have to be milled small enough in order to not be very reflective. So that way it can be seen as a matte eyeshadow. And this is a talc free formula. Usually if there's talc incorporated, it's a little easier to blend away the color. Sometimes it doesn't seem pigmented enough, but in this case it's a mica based. So it tends to stick to the skin better. Sometimes it's hard to blend it out. I'm hoping that silica, the next ingredient, alleviates some of that and allows the color to blend better. Silica is also gonna give a softer feeling to the shadow as well as nylon 12. And I really, really love when nylon 12 is incorporated into eyeshadows I don't know what it is but that like if there's nylon 12 in that shadow it's usually very soft very blendable and so this I like because the problem we notice with a lot of matte eyeshadows particularly those that are very bright very colorful they feel very rough on the eyes and don't blend out properly so I believe that these two ingredients are gonna help make it a more blendable softer formula the matte shadows do have some similar ingredients to the ones that were in the shimmer shadows. In the case of a binder, there's magnesium stearate as well as capric caprylic triglyceride, as well as all the extra fluff ingredients like the vanillin, the green tea extract. The matte eyeshadow also has methyl mcacrylic cross polymer, and this is gonna help also give a mattifying appearance and absorb excess oil. Aluminum starch octanol succinate is gonna act in a similar manner. It is a starch, so it is gonna absorb some of that oil as well. So the preservative in this formula is phenoxyethanol in combination with caprylo-glycol and ethyl hexoglycerin, which is a very common preservative system. I see that a lot. So overall, I think this is gonna be a very, very nice formula. It seems like the shadows are gonna be softer. And I really, really love the idea of it being two-sided with the colorful ones on the one side. And I really, really love the neutral ones on the other side. So I hope when it is back in stock that things go a little bit smoother and people can get a hold of it. Congrats to Christy. I think she deserves this. This has been a long time coming. And I will link it down below so when it does come back in stock, feel free to click there. It will be an affiliate link if you want to check it out. And if you learned something today, don't forget to click the like button so I know to do more of these kind of videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any videos where we talk about makeup and skincare and the science behind them. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye!